Anushree, please tell us what your admissions process looked like for when you started out with your master's. Hello. I actually started off with some of the introductory material prep, be it the GRE, TOEFL. Those were the entrance examinations that I had to take. I worked on the preparation for those examinations while I was looking at the different universities and coursework that I was interested in. As I worked on my preparatory materials and got through the GRE and TOEFL, I shortlisted the universities and started applying for those. I also ensured that I got in touch with the professors teaching there in which I had special interest. I also reached out to a couple of seniors and acquaintances to understand more about how their journey looked like and what was what were their criteria in order to shortlist the universities. In terms of the admission process, I think the most important part for me was understanding the value offerings that each university had to give and also the overall opportunities, uh, academics, extracurriculars, the clubs, the climate, of course, and uh, future job prospects. I think it was the wide array of these and prioritizing them in that order. I also considered building my all-round profile in order to tighten up my SOP. I did have a lot of extracurriculars and papers and other work that I wanted to showcase. I ensured that I had the niche for which I was applying, I ensured that I catered my SOP accordingly to the specific coursework that I was interested in. I also mentioned clearly about my research focus and interest to get on research groups uh, immediately as I was joining master's. And the plan was to join for master's with thesis. So plans for all of that in place. Fantastic. Now tell us why and how you converted your master's degree into a PhD here in America. As I was mentioning my interest in research, I started off my master's along with doing core research in the area that I was interested in. Always as a child, I was intrigued by how things work and wanted to learn hands-on stuff. And I had a very good interest towards nature. Being a nature lover, I was an avid backpacker. I also do a lot of art as an artist. Since I value nature and I had a good hold of math, I, I was looking for something more on hands-on side of things. I worked on my electrical engineering in my undergrad back in India. But trying to piece all of these things together, it just felt appropriate to work on climate tech, because that was one of the aspects that I was really interested in. In order to get to the path of sustainability, the first and foremost things that I could think of were renewable energy resources and how we can utilize the maximum out of them. As I started my master's research, specifically in the area of solar for residential customers, I was explicitly interested in how we can get this to the customer. In my master's, I was able to get to some of the research aspects, which was a little more theoretical. I really wanted to dwell a lot deeper and the perfect opportunity for that sounded like a PhD. Given that I had already started off in the lab, my very first internship was with a research group uh, where I dealt with a lot of people with PhDs and worked very closely with them. I was completely intrigued with that and I thought, Let's give this a try. And I gave my entrance exam for PhD. I had my research project in hand. My advisor always wanted me to convert to PhD. And it did seem like a research topic that's gonna give a lot of value. I wanted to prototype the things that I was working on and also work on a little more depth for research. Also understand a little more of the critical problem solving skills. And I believe the whole process by itself is something that I was very aspired to experience. That's the reason I converted from master's to PhD. Hey friends, welcome to Chine Coaching. I'm Rob and at Chine Coaching, we're all about helping you be successful in your cross-cultural journey, especially with study abroad and higher education. In this video, we're exploring higher education, master's, PhD, especially for women in engineering. We're learning a great, amazing story from Anushri to see and kind of inspire you guys to see what could be possible for you. So Anushri, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Anushree Ramnath. I'm currently working as a staff modeling engineer in electric systems at Form Energy. Prior to this, I was working with Enphase Energy and I have a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from University of Minnesota. 
The focus was on power and controls, targeting renewable energy resources. I'm originally from Bangalore, which is in southern part of India. Awesome. Yeah, so excited to be hearing out your story today. Now, Anshri, tell us more about just how someone doing a PhD can balance their schedule and course load. Absolutely. Definitely, PhD involves juggling multiple things, and I think that's one of the life skills that we acquire in the process. A couple of things that I kind of worked on include trying to understand the course load and what are the commitments that I would need based on the courses that I select for a semester. Of course, the research assistantship work, which involves complete in-depth research in the lab. And also a couple of semesters, I had to do the teaching assistant job. Working part-time or full-time uh, in, in terms of a co-op or internship, along with proceeding with research, planning all of these things and laying out the schedule, it's pretty intense and it's it requires a lot of attention and intention in terms of what we need to achieve every semester. I believe that my extracurricular interests also need equal amount of attention because that, that was my way of refueling. I was also part of multiple clubs at different positions and different stages of my PhD. So the first thing that I ensured was time management and prioritizing what needs to be done. Depending on the coursework that I had selected, I selected which club and what position I could be as part of the club for that semester. If it was a TA ship, I knew that that would take a lot more hours along with my research assistantship. Even otherwise, there would be research duties that I'll have to complete in order to hit appropriate milestones, be it the PhD oral examination or the final examination. Also ensured that I had the paper deadlines and other intermediate timelines in place. So the whole aspect of this was I think explicit time management and intentionally setting up priorities. This is how I was able to achieve all of those. If you want to get admitted into outstanding universities abroad, then you need to check out the Collegiate Mentorship Program. This unique college prep program has everything you need to get into your dream college. You will receive one-on-one -on -one mentorship from top university professors, lecturers, and researchers, specifically in your field and industry of interest. You will expand and apply your knowledge on academic subjects in ways not possible within your current school courses. You will also get access to over 125 professors and researchers from top universities in the US and UK, like Harvard, MIT, Columbia, Cambridge, Oxford, Duke University, UC Berkeley, and many more. Connect with the Collegiate Mentorship Program to get the learning, research, and internship opportunities needed to earn admissions into the world's elite universities. You mentioned uh, involvement, especially outside the classroom. Tell us why that's important, and especially when you're doing a PhD. Yeah, when you're doing a PhD, I think a lot of our aspects are mostly into critical thinking, problem solving, and there are cases where we tend to get isolated and work very solely on the problem by itself. As much as it's important to hone the technical skills, it's equally important to be able to network in our field, be able to present confidently and put across our ideas. Even the whole aspect of achieving good results in PhD would be when you'd be able to apparently convey or exactly convey the ideas and thoughts to a layman without jargon. In order to achieve all of those aspects, I believe reaching out to people, working with different people from different walks of life is extremely essential. First things first, I was a mentor for several undergraduate women, be it part of IEEE Women in Engineering Club or Women in Science and Engineering. The reason for picking this is when I moved from India to United States, I saw how the gender gap was pretty drastic in engineering fields. I thought it was my place to give back. And given that I know this is where I want to live, I wanted to ensure that I want to give my best in, to the community uh, from which I'm getting a lot in terms of education and otherwise. First thing that I came across was it's important to have K-12 schools and girls retained in STEM at the very early stages in school in order for them to pursue higher degrees and then get into the workforce. That was my passion for being part of Society of Women Engineers, being part of summer schools where I could go and explain about STEM, volunteer for several clubs like these in order to ensure that 
kids are motivated in STEM fields and understand that they have a lot of value that they can bring to the table, be it science, engineering, or anything related to science and mathematics. The other aspects of this were once I started involving myself in IW Women in Engineering, I wanted to get into the membership role uh, when I was a membership officer, coordinating memberships and ensuring people understand how it's important to be part of a group that's well-knit, uh, a group of women engineers from different fields and different backgrounds in order to discuss day-to-day -day and also ensure that we have different kinds of career talks and any job review for resumes, interviews and the like in place so that they are confident, they are ready for the next step and they also have role models to look at inside the community. I was also the Director for Communications for Council of Graduate Students. This was the university-wide forum. This helped me be a voice uh, to explain my ideas, to be able to bring people together and also be part of a team that could derive good amount of rules and govern the, uh, I think, the student body, how they think, how they proceed, and also bring all of these thoughts back to the management at the university. Having this perspective as an international student and bringing that value to the table is something that I really enjoyed and I thoroughly believe that it was an essential part of my curriculum. More and more women are getting involved, especially in STEM and engineering. And there's ways to even give back in the community and help kind of cast that vision, give that education, and also, yeah, build your network, uh, build people that are also helping and encouraging you. So my friends, if you are learning a lot in this video, hit that like button uh, to say thanks to Anushri, uh, talking about her journey, her experience abroad. And our chai question for you guys is, are you considering master's or PhD? Uh, let me know in the comments what you're considering for your higher education. Is it undergrad, master's, PhD? What are you applying to right now? Uh, let us know. I uh, would love to see that. And now, Anushri, let's talk a little bit more of how can people prepare for their job search, internships, um, and their career while doing PhD? While doing PhD, I think a lot of people think about different avenues ahead. Uh, it could be in terms of research, it could be getting into industry or academia. Whatever it be, I think it's very important to have a clear path in terms of how we want to tread. And each one's journey is different, given that it's a PhD and it takes a good couple of years. All of us might have had opportunities to work on internships or co-ops based on our interests. And then we do have a set of companies that we believe we can make a difference in. For me, it was climate tech and I was really clear about me being part of a company that values sustainability, diversity, and does something to combat climate change. One thing that really helped me was networking. Uh, for everyone that I come across, I ask them to network immensely inside their field, outside their field, uh, be it in conferences and any possible opportunity to network. It's always good to know people from our industry, always good to understand what they're working on and what's the next big thing according to them. Keeping all of these thoughts, I did shortlist the companies that I would be interested in. And I ensured that I do enough research about the company to give them a good understanding of what is the value that I can offer, what's something that I bring to the table, be it uh, specifics of technology or be it my soft skills that I've earned over the process. I wanted to ensure that I clearly put that across and definitely be technically sound in terms of strong fundamentals, having a good hold of everything that we put on our resume, be able to clearly articulate our specific contributions in different projects that we have done so far, and also be able to say what your specific role is, how did it make a difference? All of these aspects help me build an all-round profile. And I believe that all-round profile is something that companies also look for because they want good technically sound people who can communicate their ideas and who can collaborate with the team, who can live the culture of the company along with doing everything that they aspire to do. It's definitely a give and take. And I believe ensuring that we can put that across really well is essential in any job interview. In terms of the job search, based on the different companies that I had shortlisted, I was pretty active on LinkedIn to reach out to people in similar job areas and job roles to understand what their day-to-day -day looks like. And that helped me even find, refine, and fine tune the way I process the information and give it out in terms of the interviews. You definitely need to grow in your soft skills. You need to build a network. Those are super important factors 
for the job search here in America. So I'm so glad you mentioned those on Ashree. Also, don't forget to connect with the Collegiate Mentorship Program to get the tools and mentorship for studying abroad at your dream university. We'll have links in the video description and comments. And friends, we're actually making another video with Anushree as well about her career working um, in engineering and her kind of specific uh, scope of renewable and sustainable energy here in America. And so, yeah, check out that video. We'll have the link to learn more about being an engineer working um, in America as an engineer, as a woman. And so some really cool stuff that you're going to learn in that video. Anushree, thanks so much. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, thanks for sharing about your PhD journey. I know it's going to inspire other people as well. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This is great. Awesome. And so friends, you can get us online as well on Instagram, LinkedIn. Make sure you're uh, subscribed to our China Coaching e-newsletter that we send out every week. It has great tips and resources. And we're so thankful that you're part of this China Coaching community. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.